Hello and welcome to this short video showing you how to format TMAs. I'm going to show you how to add your personal details into a header in your document and show how to set up the ideal line spacing, font and text colour for a TMA. The version of Word I'm using here is from Office 2010. Any modern version of Word you might be using will look pretty similar to this, but if you have a version of Word that's older, or you're using another word processing package, and you don't know how to do what I'm showing you in this video, then first of all, check the help within your software package. You can often do that by pressing the F1 key within a program, and if the answer's not there, then ask your tutor for help. Here then is an example of what I'd like to see on my computer monitor when marking your TMA. Oh, and by the way, the text I'm using here is not from any student's TMA, it's randomly generated Microsoft help text. First, you'll notice this area at the top of the document where the text is faint or greyed out. This is the header text. The text inside a header will appear on every page that you produce, so using it can save you time. You need to make sure that you've included certain information in your TMA and you could type this at the beginning of every page of the document, but having to add it to every page is time consuming and unnecessary if you make use of the header. Your tutor will want to know whose TMA they are marking. They may even have more than one TMA open at a time on their computer monitor, so your name, OUID, the TMA number and the course number will be useful to have here. So let me show you how to add a document header. I'm going to open a new blank document. I do that by hitting Control or Command and N. Or you can go up to File, New. Now if we type here, anything we type will appear in the normal body of the document. You can't type up here in the header yet. You can't even single click in there. You have to double click near the top of the page or you can go to insert on the ribbon and choose header from there. And now you can enter the sort of details that you want to appear on every page. So my dummy student is called Anno U student. Just type your name, use tab to move to the next part. Oh, and please don't use the space bar because that can add all sorts of formatting problems into a document. When you press tab, the cursor moves to the center. So here I could put TU100 and I could put TMA01 or whichever number it is. If I press tab again, the cursor moves to the right side of the document header and in here I might want to put my PI, my personal identifier, that's my OU identity. I'll make one up and that's done. I can click up here to close the header or I can just double click in the body. Notice how the text is greyed out so it's less of a distraction when you go on to work in the body of the document. So we've done that little job now and with relatively little effort your header will appear on every page. I'll go back to the document I had opened earlier and you'll see here as we go down it's there on page two. The header information again appears on page three and so on. So that's the way to add a header. Now let's talk a little bit about font choices. The default font for this version of Word is Calibri. The default font in older versions of Word was Arial. I find both Calibri and Arial easy to read fonts on screen. And like most tutors these days, I do most of my marking directly on the screen. A long time ago now, Courier was the only font available for word processing in the age of typewriters and dot matrix and golf ball printers. Now there are myriad fonts that can be generated by computers. The choice can be confusingly wide. Courier was a good font for proofreading when the only practical way to read a document was to print it out. But now that most of us, well, most markers of TMAs anyway, read documents on screen, we prefer a modern font such as Calibri. It's a good idea to avoid Comic Sans and other novelty fonts for reasons I won't go into here, but if you are interested, you can always waste, I mean, spend many hours online reading about why Comic Sans in particular and fonts like Courier should not be used unless you intend to make a particular point. And now, just a very quick word about font colours. I will be using blue for adding comments to your TMAs. I tend to italicise this for those students who have issues seeing particular colours. And so please only use black for your answers. 
unless you have a particular personal need to use other colours. Do let me know, however, if that's the case. And let's take a look at line spacing. The default setting for line spacing in Word is 1.15. I would prefer your TMAs to have line spacing no wider than that and you can adjust it here in the home ribbon. There's a drop down that will give you a range of sizes. There you'll see we can select various line spacing. I'm just going to select this bit of text so whatever I do in line spacing will only affect that text. The moment it's 1.15 One, it looks a bit cramped to me, one and a half, two and three. In the days when tutors marked printed out versions of TMAs, it was handy to be able to handwrite comments in between lines. So therefore students were often told to double space their work. Nowadays, as we've discussed, most tutors mark TMAs directly on the screen. We can place our comments anywhere we need within your TMA and so double line spacing is no longer a necessity and it just makes a document longer and more tedious for us to scroll through. So to summarise, this icon, line and paragraph spacing, drops down and there it is, I'm happy with the default of 1.15. There are another couple of options here to do with spaces before and after paragraphs. I like to see a space between paragraphs and this is where you can adjust it. So this is the default setting, add space before paragraph. And if you leave it at that, well, that's what I like to see when I'm marking. Now a word about setting out questions and question numbers. I don't need you to reproduce the questions from the TMA in your answers. I won't read them there anyway, and I use my own copy of the TMA questions. Including the questions in your answer just adds to the amount of scrolling backwards and forwards that I have to do when navigating your document. If you really need to include TMA questions in your document, and I know that some of you may find that helpful, then please at least change the font colour of those so that I can quickly distinguish the bits that are your work and the bits that I don't need to read. Question numbers, however, are essential. There's no need to go in for any fancy formatting, such as indentations of the question parts or subparts, and I would prefer you to not use any auto-formatting or numbering, as this makes adding comments more difficult at my end. Just make sure that the appropriate number appears before that particular question. It's just a matter of using the exact same numbering system that's used in the TMA questions. Well, that's enough for now. I hope you found this video useful. Do click on the like button if you found the video useful as it helps tutors to improve the support that we offer. Pass on any comments you have in the Student Regional Forum. Thanks for watching.